Hello and welcome to my brand new channel. I'm going to go through a series of videos to guide you through the wonderful world of PowerShell and other geeky things along the way. I'll start with the basics of what PowerShell is, how you can create your own scripts, and showing you how to use things like loops, the various commands that are in there, importing data, the whole shebang. We'll even delve into the .NET library that allows you to display Windows controls like forms, buttons, checkboxes, combo boxes, all the things that you want to create a good graphical user interface. So today, what we'll cover is what is PowerShell, opening it up, setting your environment, getting to know it a little bit more, We'll look at some of the old DOS commands and compare them to the new PowerShell commandlets. We'll do the Hello World script, because if you've ever done any kind of development before, you know that your first script's got to be Hello World. And I'll show you about how to develop some tools, just to briefly get a look into what we're going to be building up to by the whole sort of series of videos, so what you can get at the, at the end of it. I'll cover what we're doing next time. So let's get started straight away. So what is PowerShell? PowerShell is a scripting language built on top of Microsoft's .NET technology. It aims to help techies and admins that may not be software developers to build scripts, build tools to help them do their job better. It allows you to do automation and just bulking up things together within one script. So PowerShell is essentially two things. You get a command line, a bit like your DOS prompt that helps you to run commands, running scripts within that way. You also get an environment that's like a scripting environment that we're going to run now. So in order to run the scripting environment, click on the start button and start typing power for PowerShell. And as you can see here, PowerShell ISC, that's the environment. That's what we're going to run today. So just click on run as administrator. You get a prompt coming up, just say yes to that. These other two here that you can see, or other three, should I say, um, they're just the console windows. We'll go into them a little bit later. So when it opens up, we can see here that we're running as administrator. We've got untitled 1.ps1, so we can start typing our script straight away. We've got a menu and a toolbar. So the menu, quite standard stuff, really. On your file and edit, what you'd expect. View, turn things on and off. Tools menu, not loads within that. You've got general settings to turn things on and off and to set various settings. We won't go into that now. You've got the colors and fonts, which can be quite handy. You can change the colors of, like, say, the name of a function or the commands that are within it. So we won't do that today. We'll just stick with the defaults. So the toolbar, what have we got on the toolbar? So you've got new, open, save, cut, copy, all, all that lot, really. We've got this one here. So if you start typing things, even if you start typing things wrong and it doesn't know what they are, instead of doing CLS, this is essentially the same thing. So it just clears that console window. So what else have we got? We've got undo and redo in case you've gone wrong. We've got a play button or run the selected script. So if you've got pages and pages of scripts, but you just want to run one line just to see where that's going wrong or what that produces for you, you can highlight it and click run selected. We've got a stop button there. So if your script is going on forever and ever and you realize that you've forgotten something, you can click the stop on it there. These two options here, we're not really gonna go into. These ones here, just change the view of your whole environment. So you've got your console shell there and you've got your scripting pane there. I'll show you one last one here. So this is all the commands that are listed. So just on that button there. So if you think that you know of a command or you want to find out what it is, you can bring it up that way. First of all, we need to set the execution policy. So this is something that will allow scripts to be run on your computer. We're running as administrator. That allows Windows to run things as administrator within this console. But we want to be able to tell Windows that if it gets any scripts, we want to control how they come in. That's done with the execution policy. I won't go into it all, just to say that you've got a parameter for set execution policy called execution policy and it receives a value of all signed, bypass, default, remote signed, restricted, undefined, unrestricted. So one of those that you're gonna pick. I'll put the link at the bottom of the video because that's just standard Microsoft stuff. We'll start typing it. So do set dash execution. As, as you can see, it's come up straight away. So you can either select it with your mouse or press tab. That's your command there. And we want the parameter execution policy, which is that one and we want to set it to bypass. In other words, I don't want to get anything getting in the way of my script. I just want it to run. And I want this command to run smoothly. 
So I'm just going to say false. So in other words, it's going to try and do it regardless. Hit enter on that, and that's set. Right, let's have a look at a few of the commands. So we've got the DOS commands are still in there. So we can do CD documents, but we can do code completion by pressing tab to get into there. So that's still in there. We'll do CD and then code completion again. You can go through all the different folders and we'll go into the scripting folder. DIR still there. So all the DOS commands are still there to use. We could do CD backslash or we can do the PowerShell equivalent, which is set location. Hit tab on that, select path, and we can do C colon backslash, and that'll take us to the root. So they're all still in there, but within your script itself, it's better to use the commandlets rather than just try to maneuver your way around the operating system using CD. You might as well just do set location. You'll recognize this one, ping. Ping is just doing a connection between my computer and, an, and a given IP address. You normally use it to see if your router's working or connection to remote machines. So PowerShell have gone a step further. They've got their own little commandlet of ping. They've actually gone a step further than that because why have one command when you can have two? So you can see we've got the first one is test connection, given the IP address, comes up with various different information. You've also got test net connection, Again, passing it the IP address, coming up with different information. What you can do with this one, though, rather than just with ping, you can set various different things with ping, but with test network connection or test net connection, you can pass it the computer name, do trace routes, everything within there. You can control it all and you can assign it to variables. As promised, we'll do the first script, which is the hello world one. So what have we got here? We've got clear host that clears the screen same as CLS does in DOS. You've got write host. That'll display whatever you put in the string, which is between the quotes, onto the console screen. At the end here, we've got a bit of a, a flick. So what's that about? The flick means to PowerShell, it's no longer a string. It's got a command coming along. And in this case, N for new line. So it's gonna put the cursor on the next line. So it's a carriage return effectively. The next line, that's a variable. So where we're going to store data and all variables are prefixed with a dollar, as you can see within there. So dollar name is going to get the value of read host, enter name. So whatever I type in is going to go into dollar name. And then we're going to write that variable out to the screen with write host. So just the variable this time, no quotes because it's not just displaying the string, it's displaying the contents of dollar name. And what's this bit here? Well, this is from the .NET library. It's displaying a message box and all it's saying is hello world, add in a space, showing you that variable there. So we'll run it or we can run a selected part, like I said before, but we'll run the whole lot. Enter the name, right, geeky, hit enter on that. So that's stored it in dollar name and written it back out to the screen as dollar name. So whatever was in dollar name in this case, geeky. But what's happened to my message here? Because we're in the environment, the message is there. It's just down here. Look. So we can just say OK to that. So that's your first script. We're going to go into everything to do with scripting, really. Well, as deep as a rabbit hole goes. So one thing that I'm going to take you forward with is something that I created called Health Checker. Pulls up various different things like system info, shows you how to clean up your, your system, show you the install software, searching the event log and the file system and searching the registry. And what we're going to do is take you through each of the Windows controls to display this information. So that's gathering the information here. And as you can see, it's coming up with this information here. So these are all your processes. You can select one of them. So if I wanted to kill Chrome off, I can kill that. So it just goes. So we'll show you exactly how to create these tab controls, the whole lot. Displaying services and your schedule tasks, they're all within commandlets that we'll show in later videos. Next time we'll be covering importing and exporting of data through CSV files, a little bit about the get process commandlet, and also I'll cover the debug menu so we can see what's coming into our variables.
As always, we're going to finish off with the website of the video. So today's is summary.com. If you've got a really long article that you really can't be bothered reading through, just copy the URL, go to summary, paste it in there, click summarize. And what that'll do is it'll take that really long read that you've got, summarize it into just a few paragraphs, do all your settings there and read shorter articles. So there you go. Enjoy. See you next time. Bye.